All right, here we go. This is Cabal against White Rock Game 5. Epic, epic game here. The first series that we've seen in the PokerStrategy.com TSL to go to Game 5, in fact. So let's take a look at who our players are. In the top right, in the brown Protoss. I'm not going to say pieces because I ain't your brother, Tasteless. It is Cabal. In the bottom right, with the purple Protoss, we have White Rock. Wait, hold on, you're not my brother? Wait, time out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not your biological brother, Day9. You know, he's always saying, oh, in the purple Protoss pieces. But these aren't pieces. This is a video game, Tasteless, not a board game. Well, I'm a nerd, but I'm not that big a nerd. Tasteless has a little nerd heart, too. <laughs> um, oh, no, but let, let's focus on this for just a second, okay? These guys both hugging the right side of the map. It's still a pretty big map, so um, you're not necessarily going to see... Um, aggression plays as much of a big role as, for instance, our previous map. Um, as far as positioning goes, you can still slip out of your own base. Uh, it's not one of these things where you're actually trying to box your way out of a funnel. Um, just judging from positioning here, both these guys with pylons pretty close to their base, so they're clearly trying to focus on minerals early on, and, of course, same scouting patterns here right after Gateway. You know, I'm really interested to see who has, you know, the fighting spirit here. You know, no pun intended. It just kind of came out like that. It's I like swear. it's like totally coincidental because this map is called Fighting Spirit. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's entirely irrelevant. Is <laughs> anyways, I want to see who has <laughs> the fighting spirit, who has the will to win. Because you know, are they going to do something standard here? I hope that one player really has the balls to just get out there and say, you know what, I'm going to four gate, or the other guy's like, you know what. I'm going to proxy DTs or something and just do something totally wild. Just go off the wall to try to win this fifth game no matter what. And uh, will one of these players do that? No. I don't think so. No, they won't. Because, but I want one of them to Because it's already time for that to pass. I don't think anybody's going to four-gate or two-gate. I think this is a map that doesn't really justify this. Um, however, uh, I think what's going to be pivotal uh, is, is the mid-game because uh, – this is one of these maps where you got a small ramp, you're pretty far away. Tech patterns are probably the most critical, so let's go ahead and see how much intel does the scouting probe gather. My guess is actually neither of these guys are going to get inside their opponent's base. Now in PvP, and we see it all the time, even at the highest level PvPs, the scouting probe sometimes slips by the zealot like he was lubed up with butter or something and just wiggled in there. But most of the time, you just see the zealot block the ramp. Um, if that does happen, then it's going to come down to intuition. All right, well, we'll see if any of these zealots are buttered up because Let's they see. are already on the ramp. These okay. guys scouting each other last. And, uh, well, we see right now no tech out of either of them yet, just both of them making the, uh, the cybernetic scores. And the probes not being able to get up, but maybe they'll use their range and start attacking Zealots because Probes are the best unit in the game. Okay. And we see the brown one trying to get up here, uh, and let's see. Oh, that that Probe has Cabals. He has serious Cabals. Um, but he can't get in there, so I don't care how... Maybe he couldn't get in there because his Cabals are so big, <laughs> and uh, it's a small ramp. Uh, but seriously, he did not manage to get in there. Again, I, I know we're trying to be goofy here, but uh, let's be serious for a second. You, if you get inside your opponent's base in PvP, it's huge because it's all about the tech patterns. Out of all the matchups in the whole game, this is the one where the tech pattern dictates everything. Um, in fact, frankly, uh, while it's convenient, it's still true, um, this is the closest matchup, I think, to poker. A lot of it's about bluffing. A lot of it's about reading your opponent. And uh, in this case, uh, I think, uh, unfortunately, these guys are both going to have to just read each other based off minimal amounts of information. Well, you know what? That is quite interesting you say that because the majority of super successful Protoss, uh, I mean, uh, super successful poker players that come from StarCraft are, in fact, Protoss players. You probably said Protoss because you're sitting next to this amazing Protoss that's, player. <laughs> that's why. Um, <laughs> but anyways, uh, you know, Protoss, I guess they just, maybe they're just lucky, just like choosing Protoss in the game, they are lucky at poker. You know, I had to get down here in a hurry in the taxi, and instead of just getting one, I just made gateways in the middle of the map and uh, spawned out of one. And here I am. No, but no, but seriously, in fact, uh, as you said, you know what, all the, the biggest StarCraft players like Elki or Gur, also known as Guillaume, you're poker players, uh, and frankly, the skills that you gain from StarCraft clearly translate into poker. The vast majority of StarCraft players now also play poker. Uh, so, you know, what a great thing it is 
do have PokerStrategy.com to sponsor an event like this. Okay, getting into this game, we see Dragoon Range being upgraded. This is actually a little bit more of a tech uh, uh, game we're seeing here. Very standard, by the book. This may actually come down to Shuttle Reaver Micro, unless somebody opts to go for a Rush Expand where they trust that they can pick off their opponent's shuttle. Well, you know, both of them playing so safe, I'm very sad, Tasis. I really wanted to see someone do something wild like 4Gate, but TT, yo. TT1, yo. TT1, yo. I'm crying. Yo. There are tears streaming down my cheeks because we are going to see a completely standard game out of both these guys, it looks like. And who will expand first? You know I what? think that's... Uh, <laughs> What is important to look for here? You know what's so funny? When we first got to Korea, Dan would always say TT to Koreans. And I was like, Dan, nobody's going to get that. But actually, Koreans do get that joke. The TT, which means the crying face. Greatest country on earth, man. I know. I, I was like, Dan, nobody knows what you're talking about. But then they do. So, uh, you know, greatest country on earth. In case you're confused, we both do live in Korea. Uh, working in the StarCraft industry. And look at this. They're both um, going for the expansion. I expected a Reaver push, but then again, let's look at the architecture of the map. They're pretty far away, uh, so interesting defensive play. Um, if we could just for a second, I don't know what you guys can see, but um, if our observer can move to the upper center of the map, see this piling up here. The, things like this are critical in PvP. That's there to spot a uh, shuttle with a Reaver in it to uh, take out probes. And it's these little things in a mashup like this that are huge because in PvP you lose a few probes, you get behind. Well, we finally see some deviation in their plays, and we have White Raw moving up the map with his units. In the meantime, in TT1's base, he has Reaver Tech, so he is going to go for Reaver with this expansion and stay more on the defensive for now while White Raw tries to pressure a bit. But now White Raw, he is also going Reaver as we see at his main nexus, so uh, they're trying to line up their tech roots once again. We got to check and see if these guys are going to get a shuttle or not because um, sometimes Reaver is purely there to defend. Hold that thought, actually. We got a battle in the middle of the map here. Poor positioning here um, as our purple Protoss are moving southward. This is White Raw, in fact, and he is running away. He was standing under that tree, getting some shade. Did not work out <laughs> for him. It looks like Cabal is going to push him back, but, uh, well, a Reaver is making. I don't think that he's going to get broken, especially with this AI pylon right out in the middle of the field. AI pylons, of course, are there just to mess up attack AI. You know, you walk in there with your units. The back ones want to attack the pylon instead of move forward and attack your opponent. Every hit the pylon takes is a hit less that your units are going to take. So it's like adding a ton of health onto your units overall. You know, I'm kind of curious to see how the um, AI pylon uh, technique works in, in StarCraft 2, actually, because of the way the AI functions differently. But, um, yeah, in PvP, a lot of players will put pylons outside the front of their base where a battle would occur because that can actually mess up. Let's say just even one or two of these Dragoons, they might attack that pylon. That changes everything. By the way, we see these guys taking Vespian gas now, um, which means the next tech phase is coming. They're done doing Reavers, at least White Raw is. So um, from there, uh, we got to see, uh, you know, how quickly you're going to attack. On, on the other hand, uh, Cabal is actually sticking with Reavers, so he has one chance for a possible timing push. You do have a large entrance to your opponent's base. Every once in a while, and it's a little um, odd to see, and it's very hard to pull off, um, I try it every once in a while, is to do um, a three or four Reaver push to your opponent right before his he has the, uh, the energy for Storm. It's very risky, but you do see it, and uh, frankly, Cabal could try to do it. We'll see uh, as time passes. You know, uh, we see right now the shuttle moving down the map, Cabal's shuttle with a Reaver in it, and I have to say, I like Cabal's play here more than White Raw's. He's staying on three gateways a bit longer, making extra units, making extra Reavers, so he's going to be the one that tries to kill his opponent. Here he goes, going to drop this Reaver behind. It looks like White Raw doesn't even know, and this could be huge right here if he gets a good scare off. Here it comes! And gets oh, one wow. probe. That, that was, was anticlimactic. That was <laughs> that was over the top for one probe, Tasteless. I'm sorry. I think I woke up all your neighbors. <laughs> I think one you may probe. have. Um, unfortunate play there, though. Uh, I think he target fired the wrong probe. That's one problem with uh, you know doing the raver drop is can you get the right unit? That was a failure, and uh, it was a failure that is uh, not just about killing your opponent's workers, but about teching correctly in the game. So uh, what he's going to have to do now, he's going to have to go for some type of reaver play. Indeed, indeed. We see right now Cabal adding gateways like a, 
a fiend, man. Look at this. Adding two more gates right there. He already added two more, so he's actually going to go up to... Wait a minute, let me count this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And he's getting uh, a citadel, and he's still got his Rolo. So Cabal is just making a ton of units. His supply right now at 107. White Raw down at 98. And I, I tell you, I actually really do like Cabal's play more here. You know, in theory, White Raw's play is better. You know, like this is what you would see Bisu do. This is, and Bisu would hold anything that comes at him from Cabal. But White Raw is not Bisu and Cabal. You know, he may be able to run White Raw over here. We see White Raw right now. He's got, well, it looks like his total gateway count is only at four. So Cabal's going to have this little timing where he has a, a decent amount more units. We see right now 121 supply to White Raw's 108. White Raw, four gates. He is making some Templar tech. So uh, there's going to be like this little window of timing that Cabal has to perhaps kill White Raw. And I got to hand it to him, man. I don't know. I just really like the play I'm seeing out of him here. I like what I'm seeing from both these guys. At this point in time, I do think unless White Raw attacks, he should have the advantage because um, what White Raw is doing is he's, he's sticking with the defense play. Now, let's say White Raw attacks, and I think he's going to be in trouble, but um, Scarabs, uh, they eat up Zealots. The only advantage that White Raw should have would be a Zealot advantage. He's getting a lot of gateways. He's not rushing to the Templar tech. He has a lot of Reavers here. So if White Raw defends, his Scarabs should eat up the Zealots. His Storm should chew up the dragoons um, but again of course it all depends on positioning and decision making but you can see white raw a reaver here at the expansion with these two cannons warping in as well as a reaver over here at the bridge um, so um, a lot of this is going to be a timing based attack okay now hold that thought we see cabal moving down on the map zealot and reaver remember the emphasis here for um, cabal is going to be to have a lot of uh, zealots in the future to rush into this all right, you know, I think that Cabal is going to have a good position here. He's moving down with his units. He has higher supply than White Raw, and a lot of White Raw's units down at the 6 o'clock expansion. So they are going to be out of position. Here we go. The Reavers starting to push in, and, I, you know, this is a hard choke to get through, but I like what Cabal's doing here. Nice side storm right there all over the Reavers. That was a disaster. He couldn't afford to lose that Archon. That was huge there. But, again, too many Reavers here for um, White Raw to, to lose this. I mean, even if uh, Cabal pushes in there... I mean, what is he going to do? He's going to take out uh, just a few amount of units, and the splash damage is going to wipe him out. Well, White Raw, he's playing such a defensive game right now. All he wants to do is just hold on. But at the same time, Cabal is expanding 12 as well. So, you know, he's going to keep up, economically speaking, and he is going to sit here and have map control. So, you know, the onus is going to be on White Raw coming out. But White Raw has enough high Templars at this point that suddenly I'm feeling a lot better for him. And here we go. Looks like Cabal are going to try to push up this ramp. He's trying to get up this ramp. This is a pretty tricky position. Um, it, frankly, it takes a lot of balls to try to go up that ramp in this uh, spot because you really have to carve a hole in there. You can see he retreats now. But um, again, I think Cabal's uh, strategy was on a timing attack. We, we see him edging around the map. His control isn't bad. In fact, even his uh, his the concept of a strategy isn't poor, but it's not working because White Raw is too well equipped. We see there's an opportunity for uh, oh, 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 hold that thought. A little storm over here. Uh, in fact, let's maybe make that too. Oh, let's have the option for storm drops, uh, which is what I w wanted to say. Is he's going to move in here and try to do some storm drops if if he if he wants to. We'll see. You know, I think it's kind of important for him to perhaps think about getting shuttle speed, you know, really try to start harassing, because he is contained. Cabal has so many units that even with all these great unit mixtures that White Raw has here, you know, the High Templars, the Archons, the mass of Reavers, uh, he can do a lot of damage to the army, but Cabal has his forces spread out outside this bridge, and it's going to be really hard. Uh, and we have the White Raw shuttle moving up towards 12 there it is it is flying past cabal taking another expansion in the meantime there are cannons up here but uh i think that this this reaver shuttle could at least chase away uh the probes from this expansion okay here we see the drop coming down now here now i, I gotta point out that white oh. Oh, takes out about four probes there uh he's gonna take out this cannon as well uh, you can see the probes clustered over here oh Ouch. i think he's taking what about seven probes out something now. like that yeah now, and one thing about White Raw is he, he, he really invests in these drops. He wants these drops to do a lot of damage, and he's got to be careful with this kind of stuff. I think the next thing he might want to oh, hold that thought, he's going to go for the forge. 
And if he takes out this forge, that's huge. Yeah, getting rid of that plus one upgrade would be very nice. But Cabal gets back in time, chases this away, and he might, in fact, get that shuttle. And yet, you know, as you were saying, he got the forge. Oh, my God. How did that? Oh, wow. I'm actually really impressed with that. The forge suicided. It did. I mean, it was just like <laughs> it was on fire with that blue stuff, and it thought it was a Terran building, and it just off it just, itself. It just, the probes couldn't repair it. <laughs> Well, you know, as you were saying, White Rod does invest a lot in these drops. This is his style. And look at this. It looks like White Rod's decided it is time to come out. A nice little arc there by Cabal. And will White Rod be able to get out? I don't think White Rod can get out right now. I think that was a huge mistake. I think he should have actually sat back and tried to save some, uh, save up some money and spend that on units before he busted out here. Stuck with harassment. Because you can see the yeah, Cabal has the position here. White Raw actually had a big advantage by taking out that forge. Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. What, oh my God! What the White hell are these reavers doing? He kills one of Cabal's, luckily, but he lost his reavers, and this is bad news, man. That could he be. He has game. to get some huge storms off here, and he does. Look at those storms oh all over Cabal's God. dragoons, and Cabal taking a gigantic amount of damage. White Raw right now sitting at 150 supply, Cabal at 160, but Cabal he has taken that fourth base. And as long as he can hold on to this containment, he is going to still be in the lead here. Cabal actually just grabbed an expansion, and it's up to White Wah. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> I think White Wah. I, I think I talked like Bugs Bunny for a second. White Wah. Um, to get outside of his base. And I don't think he can do that right now, and this is really unfortunate for him because otherwise he's going to lose the game. His harassment's been great, but um, position is really what wins you the game in Protoss versus Protoss. Well, Cabal still has the position, but the supplies are getting pretty close here. 170, 160. Uh, Cabal, you know, I, I'm still feeling he's playing like a really good game, man. His macro is very strong. We can see he's keeping his minerals very low. He's got that fourth base. If we look over there real quick, just transferred probes in. So his economy is going to start getting in. But look at this, a Reaver drop up at 12. And uh, it looks like the Reaver not getting a whole ton of kills. And, oh, this, this photon cannon is not shooting because it is unpowered. I was like, wait a minute. It's unionized, man. <laughs> it is not going to work right now. Um, really great play here by White Ra. Uh, this is one of the few things that's giving him somewhat of an, uh, I, I shouldn't say an advantage in this game, but it's something that's working towards his favor. He's going to go ahead and retreat, but, uh, oh, very interesting play. Let's take a look up here at the top left. Interesting tactic here. Coming from a contained Protoss, going to make that gateway. Maybe make some DTs, try to pick off some probes. But again, the positional advantage does favor Cabal. That's right. But, you know, if he can get something sneaky with that gateway, you know, maybe make a high Templar on the ledge, storm that expansion off. But look at this. Now White Rock coming out and Cabal, not enough units down there. His army is split up quite a bit. Beautiful storms going off. And I think White Rock is going to bust right out of here. Too many Dragoons. These Zealots don't, uh, you know, have enough to stop them here. The Archons are getting picked off, um, and you can see suddenly Cabal's going to get thrown out of position here. This is actually disastrous because we saw him in uh, the advantage for most of the game. Way too many Dragoons. What, three Archons, so Zealots won't really help. I don't care how many Templars you have right now because suddenly this the scale has tipped into uh, White Ra's favor. And, uh, okay, here we go. This is Cabal's one chance here, but remember, these Zealots uh, clustered together. They have to be split up here. The, the Zealots are, uh, excuse me, the Archons are going to chew them up. That's right, and more reinforcements coming up from White Raw, and it looks like the game is just about over here. Two attack upgrades for White Raw. In the meantime, poor Cabal just with one. So, uh, wow, man, what can I say? White Raw, he played a brilliant game. So did TT1, though, as well. I, yeah, and it looks like uh, that's going to be it, man. It's just about over. White Raw has come back, even though I think TT1 played a brilliant game. He really gave us a great series here. And White Raw, slimly, by the skin of his teeth, is going to advance. I can't believe that this game turned out this way. Um, so really nice play there. GG, well played by White Raw. Wow. Excellent game. That's right. And do not go away. We have another great matchup coming up next. It's going to be the former TSL champion, JF, a.k.a. IF Nage, against Gosi Terran. So do not go anywhere.